Right before takeoff, this man angrily mocked a black woman on the plane. But when a strange person seated behind him stepped in, things took a dramatic and unexpected turn, instantly making him regret his actions. Shanice Jacobson was about to relax into her designated seat when a tall and imposing shadow loomed over her. Mildly surprised by the towering presence, the 62-year-old woman looked up to find the annoyed face of a middle-aged man boring down at her. From the looks of it, he wasn't in the best of moods that morning, and Shanice knew better than to get on his nerves and risk provoking him further. So she spoke to him, hoping to be out of his hair soon. How may I help you, sir? Her voice was calm and soft with a mild crack that mirrored her old age. She had spoken so tenderly that it could cause even the most rigid hearts to melt. However, this gentleman was not at all pleased with it. Instead, the annoyed look on his face morphed into a deep scowl as if he saw something appalling on the old lady's face. Are you on this flight? He asked all of a sudden, startling old Shanice. What could he possibly mean? She had been led on the plane, which meant she clearly was on this flight. His tone, low yet heavy with sass and disbelief, confused her even further. While she stared at the man, dumbfounded, she couldn't help but notice one striking detail about him. He wore a cassock that hinted that he was some sort of priest or religious figure. Due to her brief moment of confusion, she failed to answer his question, making him hiss and shake his head in irritation. Old Shanice was at a loss for what to make of the situation. She had never seen a priest act in such a detestable manner, much less to an elderly person. As she stared in stunned silence, she contemplated her response, only to be thrown off her feet by his next words. You're in the way, ma'am. I suggest you stand up. With eyes widened with disbelief, Shanice gazed at the middle-aged man, struggling to comprehend what she had just heard. Overwhelmed with fury, she prepared to call out the man's disrespectful behavior. Priest or not, she was not about to let him walk over her. She was an elderly woman and she deserved respect. Shanice was feeling her rage build up. She usually was a good-natured woman with a very slow temper. As a lady of color, she had faced criticism and discrimination at every turn, be it school, church, or basic social gatherings. Such an environment made many her age cower in fear and low esteem. However, Shanice was never one to entertain such weaknesses. Thanks to the immense love and support she received from her family, she persevered through thick and thin despite all odds. Shanice navigated the stressful life of a black woman until she graduated from college and moved upstate New York, where her life changed for the better. While there, she got an internship as an aspiring journalist and slowly began to create a route for herself. A few months after settling in her studio apartment, she met her high school crush, a charming and witty man named Justin. They spent two blissful years sticking out for one another and bustling New York before eventually tying the knot one summer afternoon. Life with Justin was terrific for Shanice. Together, they had three beautiful children, Gideon, William, and their little daughter, Keisha. Their home brimmed with love and laughter. It seemed like they were on top of the world with the formidable empire they were building. But unfortunately, they were in for a devastating surprise. As the years went by, the cracks in their empire began to show. Now, at age 49, Shanice didn't possess the youthful energy she once had more than 20 years ago. Hence, work was slow. Similarly, her 51-year-old husband was beginning to succumb to the financial and emotional strain of fatherhood. With their kids graduating high school and moving to college one at a time, they faced multiple challenges in keeping up with the mounting bills. Due to this factor, Shanice considered taking on a job offer that required her to relocate to another city. The decision tore her, but she realized it was for the best. She and her husband had to keep the money flowing if they were going to provide their children with a comfortable college life. Justin understood the sacrifices she was willing to make, but opposed it for some reason. He didn't fancy the idea of her calling the shots for the family, especially one as grand as this. His reluctance to accept her decision slowly caused a strain in their relationship. They argued frequently and never saw eye to eye on matters related to the family. As time passed, the distance between them grew wider. Despite their efforts, they could not reconcile and return to how things were. Eventually, Justin gave in to her plan, not caring about the outcome again. Shanice jumped at the window of opportunity and pushed through with the relocation. Her zeal to fend for her kids overriding whatever pain of separation she felt that day. Immediately, she threw herself into her work, using her love for activism and journalism to distract herself from her potentially failing marriage. On some days, she believed there could be a silver lining in her relationship with Justin, especially when they connected well in their video calls. However, she couldn't shake off the feeling that some things were beyond mend, and in this case, it was her marriage. Shanice's doubts lingered for months, refusing to let her be. They ate at her like a nagging feeling until one particular day when she received the long-awaited call from Justin. On this call, 
he pointed out the elephant in the room before dropping the anticipated bombshell on Shanice. The man she had loved all her life asked for a divorce. Although she saw it coming, Shanice still felt hurt that it was happening. Her eyes stung with unshed tears, and she allowed herself that moment of sadness and vulnerability, which she had never done in her life. But as she went deeper into this unnerving conversation, Shanice discovered something that caused her tears to freeze to an alarming halt. There was one more reason Justin called it quits, and it was for something she had never seen coming. I'm sorry, Shanice, but I've moved on. The words stuck with her for decades after their divorce. Justin, once her confidant, best friend, and mentor, had shattered her trust with that sentence. She had lost all respect and admiration for him, and swore never to forgive him for this betrayal. After signing the papers, both cut communication and went their separate ways. Their children, now young adults, could scale through independently while maintaining distinct contact with Justin and Shanice. However, their daughter, Keisha, gradually leaned towards their mother when the weight of her father's actions became too much to bear. With time, Shanice retired from work, hoping to relax without stress and worry for once in her life. Unfortunately, she realized this luxury was too much to ask for as her past was still catching up to her. One day, she received an unexpected call from Gideon, her eldest son, asking her to visit Justin in Chicago. Shanice instantly dismissed the request, refusing to meet up with the man who had betrayed her trust in the most humiliating and painful way possible. She shunned her son, inching to end the discussion when he shocked her with disturbing news. Justin was terminally ill and was the one who asked their son to make the call. As he withered away on his deathbed with nothing but the fear of succumbing to cancer for comfort, he wished to see Shanice and possibly their daughter one last time to make amends. At a request like that, Shanice realized she couldn't refuse. So, with Keisha, she booked a round trip to Chicago, desperate to get it over with quickly. On the morning of her flight, she fought nervous jitters on her way to the airport. Her calm exterior failed to mirror the inner conflict that plagued her. Even Keisha was surprised by her mother's composure, unaware that it was only a facade. As they moved around the checkpoints at the airport, Shanice lost herself in her thoughts. What could she say to Justin, whom she had not spoken to for nearly 20 years? How was she going to react? The situation reopened a part of her life that she had buried entirely, and she was still in this state of unrest when the strange priest suddenly came out of nowhere with his unfriendly demeanor. Unfortunately, she and Keisha had separate seats and separate cabins, meaning she was on her own in this fight. As she angled her face towards the man, she prepared to speak her mind. However, she calmed down on second thought, choosing to reserve her energy for her mission in Chicago. So, with shaky hands, she pushed herself up and out of her seat for the man to sit by the window. Believing she had finally gotten out of his hair, she adjusted in her chair, returning to her former worry. But minutes later, something concerning again dragged her attention to the man. He kept muttering some obscene words under his breath, while sneaking small glances her way. Shanice tried hard not to believe it, but his behavior heavily indicated his displeasure with her for some unspecified reason. Although she itched to find out what he had against her, the old lady chose to ignore him and focus on her own thoughts. But the man's persistent muttering and suspicious glances irked her and made her incredibly uncomfortable. She tried to distract herself with a book, but her attention kept snapping back to him. When she finally had enough, Shanice turned to the man, her expression mirroring her inner agitation. Excuse me, sir. I couldn't help but notice that you seem upset. Is there a problem? The man's brows furrowed in question, his eyes narrowing into angry slits. Who do you think you're talking to? Shanice recoiled from the bluntness of the question. She could sense the irrational hate from a mile away and deduced that this was another racist attack she had to deal with. His ungrounded anger stemmed from the moment he realized that she was his seat partner for the trip, and now it seemed as if he could not stomach the situation one bit. Too bad for him. Shanice was not about to give him the satisfaction he craved. This is no way for a priest to behave, she pointed out, hoping the observation would call him to self-reflect. To her surprise, he feigned mock hurt at the remark before scoffing at old Shanice. Your kind makes even the nicest priests recoil. His words dripped with venom, hitting Shanice in a manner she least expected. Then, in addition to this rude comeback, he went on to mock Shanice, his voice rising by the second. The man spoke about her choice of clothing, stating that he had initially thought she was a member of the airport's cleaning staff who had snuck on board for a free trip. His words felt like a massive slap on old Shanice's face. For years, she had fought against such derogatory remarks. However, something about this one unpleasantly twisted her gut. It was one thing for ordinary people to mock her, but for a priest, the insult felt special. As if it were coming from an otherworldly authority, and the old lady shook with a mixture of anger and fear at the thought. Upon seeing how deeply his words affected Shanice, 
he offered an apology that seemed as insincere as his feelings toward her. However, he was yet to have his full. As quickly as he stopped, he went on again, mocking Shanice for everything she did, from opening her bag to reading her book. It felt like he had an agenda that afternoon, one that Shanice was gravely unsure how it started. And what's more, his tempo became increasingly high each time he aimed soul-crushing remarks at the poor lady. They just let anyone on the plane these days. He sighed in exasperation before peeking above his seat as if searching for something. Then, out of the blue, he beckoned a flight attendant over, asking that they find him a new seat partner. The man who now introduced himself as Jasper explained that he was in a sour mood, and Shanice, who he claimed reeked of old age, added to his discomfort. Slighted by the insult for the umpteenth time that afternoon, the old lady shot him a shocked look, her mind racing with a way to react yet failing woefully. Meanwhile, the encounter had drawn the attention of the other passengers and crew members who rushed to assess the situation. Instinctively, they tried to calm Jasper down, urging him to bear with the designated seat arrangements so the plane could take off. Unfortunately, nothing they said had meaning to him. Instead, he angrily lashed at them, demanding they remove Shanice from her seat. Jasper insisted that there would only be peace if they did as he requested, adding that the trip was already in jeopardy thanks to his agitated state. To fix that, he told the crowd that impure spirits such as Shanice had to be a reasonable feet away from him. Bewildered, the black woman fired back at Jasper, saying she would not move an inch from her spot. With her anger rising, she explained she had done no wrong and would no longer tolerate his insults. A few angry passengers stood by her on this decision, urging Jasper to end his unreasonable banter. However, Shanice paled over when she discovered that a vast majority had a completely different opinion. Among these people were the ones who Jasper had swayed with his cursed words and those who were just as racist as him. With their voices rising an octave each time, they pressured the crew members to do as the middle-aged man requested for decorum. The incident threw the whole cabin into a state of disarray. Some passengers clamored to get off the plane, fearing that it might not reach its destination, while others, angered by the delay, demanded prompt actions. All the while, cameras captured the ugly incident as it unfolded. Despite the raging storm brewing among the seated passengers, a greater one was forming in the short space between Jasper and Shanice. At this point, the priest had taken things a step further. With a crucifix in his hand, he began to pray against Shanice, mocking her as he continued in his one-on-one -on -one dialogue with his maker. In one instance, he called her an unclean spirit and asked for a divine intervention in her perfume collection, stating that she smelled like dust and old wood. Feeling defenseless, Shanice rebuked his taunting, tears streaming down her wrinkled face. Her heart ached bitterly. Using his authority as a religious figure, Jasper had instilled self-doubt and fear in her. She looked to the flight attendant beside her for help, only to discover that she was too intimidated to intervene. Shanice felt small and alone, unable to escape this situation. She thought of calling Keisha from her cabin, but decided against it, not wanting her daughter to be subjected to such treatment as well. Having no other alternative, she whispered a silent plea for help, hoping someone would come to her aid. Luckily, her prayers reached God's ears when a gentle voice spoke up from behind them. Enough. Just then, Shanice felt the person move in their seat and tower in the space between her and Jasper. The imposing figure didn't need an introduction as his presence was too noticeable to overlook. Jasper stopped his prayer to see who had been daring enough to stop him. Unbeknownst to the middle-aged priest, he would enter hot water as soon as he realized who the stranger behind him was. Flustered by the intrusion, Jasper asked the man what business he had with him. But instead of responding, the young man told him to leave old Shanice alone, adding that he had made his point already however nonsensical it might have been. His voice was firm, yet calm, and it had a note of respect to it despite the underhandedness. Jasper's face reddened with embarrassment. The priest didn't like how he shut him up so easily, so he spluttered a few words, mainly at Shanice, seeing that she was the cause of the incident. He continued this way until the man spoke up again, but this time with a devastating piece of information that would alter Jasper's life for good. I've heard about your blatant disrespect for others, but I never thought I'd witness it firsthand. After speaking, the man peeked at Jasper's face and smirked with satisfaction when he saw how his face contorted into a confused frown. The priest's eyes darted nervously to the man's face, and his voice shook as he asked who he was. When the answer finally came, his body froze in fear as the gravity of his actions and their consequences hit home. Shanice's savior introduced himself as Robert. As a businessman, he had moved around the country a few times, and in one of those hectic travels, he saw Jasper in a church. Robert divulged that news of Jasper being racist spread in that little town, but because he was just a traveler at the time, he thought nothing of it. However, that was until he witnessed his rude display that morning. 
Knowing that Robert could identify him was one problem, but Jasper realized that the major one emerged the next second after the young man made a shocking revelation. Robert stated that he had connections to the Archbishop and had already sent him a video recording of Jasper's behavior a few seconds ago. The news caused the priest to tremble in his seat as he understood the fate that awaited him in Chicago. This final bombshell completely disarmed him, leaving him in a state of mental unrest for the entire trip. With the heated situation finally resolved, the plane took off as if nothing had happened. Shanice thanked Robert for his intervention, believing in her spirit that he was heaven sent. After all, he did something not even the flight attendants and angry passengers could do. Meanwhile, Jasper was too stunned to speak. Throughout the trip, he maintained perfect silence, suddenly forgetting how discomforting Shanice's presence was beside him. They enjoyed the hour-long trip in silence, with both of them resigning to their worrisome thoughts. When they finally arrived, everyone went their separate ways. Jasper never spoke to Shanice or Robert again, and the old lady appreciated the effort immensely. Together with Keisha, she visited Justin on his sickbed. The reunion turned into a session full of tears and heartfelt apologies, weakening Shanice with emotions. Stress from her encounter with Jasper dissipated like effervescence, leaving room for the warm sensation she hadn't felt in years to overwhelm her. Video footage of the incident on the plane began to circulate on social media, gaining thousands of views, particularly on Facebook. After their descent into the Chicago airport, news of Jasper withered away. However, with the attention he received online, the church had no choice but to release an official statement on the issue. With the evidence and witness statements mounted against Jasper, he faced interdiction in the church, a form of religious sanction that excluded him from exercising certain rights as a priest. The news somehow warmed Shanice's heart. Although she didn't find joy in it, she felt a bit of relief, believing now that Jasper's words never came from a place of spiritual understanding, but from a man who had abused his authority as a religious leader. He had tried to break her spirit by weaponizing his faith in his racist agenda, but thanks to Robert, she finally regained her sense of worth. Although they never crossed paths since that day, Shanice remained heavily indebted to him for his intervention. What an exciting story. Do you think Jasper got the punishment he deserved? And what do you think of Robert's timely intervention? Leave an answer in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.